Well, good morning, Junior Church! Oh, that's terrible. I did not hear anybody. I think I might have heard Jack Jack, but that's just probably his sister punching him in the arm. We're going to do that again. Now, I want everybody, if you're in junior church and you're watching this morning, and you better be watching, you better not be sleeping, because I will find out and I will hunt you down. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to do that one more time, and I want to hear everybody yelling their face off. Now, if your mom and dad, are, if they're still in bed sleeping, they need to be up anyways, so you just scream your faces off. Here we go. Good morning, junior church! Oh, that's good. That's good. Wait, wait, wait. I hear the Schmidleys. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's Hopi I hear. Yep, and I hear Jack Jack. I think that's Jack Jack and the Robleses. Maybe? All right. Well, that's good. Hey, welcome to uh, uh, Junior Church today. We got some fun stuff planned. We're going to continue our, our message from last week. Yay! But first, we're going to sing a song. So we got Josh and Stevie. They're going to come up and they're going to sing. Now, here's the deal. You better be singing. So everybody get up off your couch. It's okay if you're in your jammies. Put your Lucky Charms down. Put your breakfast burritos down. Josh, Stevie, come on up, guys. Good morning, boys and girls. Brother Josh here. We're going to sing a song before Brother Rich, or before Pat, excuse me, comes up and does prayer requests. I've got Stephen here helping me sing. Now take a second, and why don't you try to guess what song we're going to be singing in junior church today? Stephen, what song do you think we're going to be singing today here in Junior um, Church? Little Green Frog. Little Green Frog. It's a pretty good guess. It's pretty good because you're right. That's why we got the frogs. Of course. Duh. <laughs> now, yeah. boys and girls, we're going to start off singing nice and slow. Um, and Bl Blodgy, dude, you got to stop talking over there, man. Your dad's here in class. You got you to gotta cool it. I need you guys participating. All right. So, again, we're going to sing Little Green Frog. Starting off nice and slow on the count of three. Steven, you ready? Yes. Awesome. Okay. One, two, three. Mm -mm, went the little green frog one day. Mm -mm, went the little green frog. Mm -mm, went the little green frog one day. So they all went, mm -mm, ah. But we know frogs go la di da di da, la di da di da. La di da di da, we know frogs go. La di da di da, they don't go. Mm -mm, ah. All right, now, pretty good for the first try this morning. Steven, well done. Excellent. Thank you. Samson, Samson, Harrison, you guys got to stop fighting back there. Harrison, get out of your nose. Ainsley, you really got to control your brothers. We're trying to do songs here. All right, we're going to speed it up, okay? We're going to speed it up, probably normal speed. Um, but I need you guys singing even louder, okay? All right, awesome. On the count of three. One, two, three. Mm -mm, mm -mm, went the little green frog one day. Mm -mm, mm -mm, went the little green frog. Mm -mm, went the little green frog one day. So they all went, mm -mm, ah. But we know frogs go, la di da di da, la di da di da, la di da di da. We know frogs go, la di da di da. They don't go, mm -mm, ah. All right, that was pretty good. You guys did much better that time. This is going to be the last time we speed up the song this morning. Um, I really want to hear you. I need the girls, I need the boys singing as loud as you possibly can, okay? All right, Steven, you ready for this one? You ready? We're all going to go as fast as we possibly can. It's going to be crazy. Okay. Okay, okay. Boys, you ready? Girls, you ready? All right, great. On the count of three, everyone, first, nice deep breath in. One, two, three, mm -mm, with a little green frog one day, mm -mm, with a little green frog, mm -mm, with a little green frog one day. So they all went, mm -mm, ah, but we know frogs go, la di da di da, la di da di da, la di da di da, we know frogs go, la di da di da, they don't go, mm -mm, ah, nice. Okay, well done, Stephen. Thanks for your help this morning. Boys and girls, you did an excellent job. We'll see you guys next week with another song. Hey everybody, I hope everything is going well at home and I hope you're being safe and paying attention to your parents. Uh, we were able to actually get some prayer requests in from your parents the other day, uh, so I'm going to read those off. And then uh, when I pray, I just hope that you uh, pray with me. Uh, it's Sadie, uh, she wants to pray for the coronavirus to go away. Uh, JL, uh, the other day, got a really nasty gash on her head. Um, and so just pray for that to heal quickly and uh, just that it doesn't get infected. 
Uh, Luke Eanes would like to pray for the quarantine to end. Daniela uh, wants to pray for the new church building. Jackie would like to pray for, uh, for everyone to get back to church as soon as possible. Leanne has two unspokens. Uh, Lydia would like to pray for uh, President Trump to have wisdom uh, during this time of uh, crisis in our country. Hudson, he wants to pray for uh, the family to heal. And uh, Lila, she's praying for her grandmother. Uh, I believe she has strep throat. Uh, so just uh, as we pray, just uh, keep all of those in, uh, in your hearts and in your minds. And uh, just uh, as, we, as we go through this time, just uh, remember what everyone's going through. And I uh, just ask that you uh, bow your heads now and let's just uh, pray and lift up these requests to, to God. Lord, I just want to thank you for uh, the opportunity that we have uh, to, uh, to pray to you, Lord, and just the kids that they have the opportunity to bring these in. And God, I just ask that you just protect everyone during this time. And uh, anybody that is actually sick, just to comfort them. And I pray that uh, they do, uh, they, uh, they get healed as soon as possible. And just uh, protect them and uh, protect the family members that they have. And uh, these requests that we have, Lord, just uh, ask that you answer them to your will. And God, I just ask that you... Uh, uh, protect Trump and uh, give him wisdom and uh, the, the the right decisions to make as uh, as we go through this and just uh, ask that you just uh, uh, protect our country and I pray that uh, as our uh, count goes higher and higher just uh, please keep us safe and please uh, the people that aren't sick uh, just uh, I pray that uh, give them the wisdom to stay home and Lord, I just want to thank you so much that we have the opportunity uh, to do this today. And uh, God, I just ask that as our building program moves forward, uh, I just want to thank you so much for the, uh, the blessing that that is. And God, just, uh, you're so good to us. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for everything that you do for all of us uh, day in and day out. And Lord, I just ask that uh, as we go through this week and uh, as uh, things go on in our lives, just again, protect us and please keep us safe. And Lord, just uh, ask that we can have a, a great time with our families uh, during this quarantine. And I pray that as we watch church, just uh, let it be a blessing to our families. And God, just ask again, please keep us safe during this time. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, Pat. I appreciate uh, Brother Pat doing that with the prayer request. And uh, I want to encourage you guys throughout the week, if you have a prayer request, make sure that you uh, email them to Alicia Campbell or Pat Campbell, or you can just email them to me, Brother Rich, and I'm at uh, geedunk33 at yahoo.com. And if you want to send me your prayer request, we'll make sure that they get read next Sunday. And I appreciate Josh and Stephen doing uh, uh, the frog song. We love the frog song. Next week, we'll have a different song. And uh, I heard about JL cracking her noodle. Well, not that I encourage you guys to get injured, but we got some special points for JL. So, so Hopi Schmidley, make sure you write down uh, 1,000 points for JL. Now, guys, don't be going out and whacking yourself to get points because I'll just take points away from you if you do something dumb on purpose. All right, so earlier I said we're continuing on last week's lesson. Well, we finished last week's lesson, and this is a new lesson, actually. We're going to talk about something uh, called Be Bigger Than What You Are. And we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 30, and we're going to talk about where the Bible says four things that are, are bigger than what they really are. And I want you to know that I've been doing junior church for a long time, and my heart is for children because kids can do some pretty big things. I have seen um, just children do some great things, and I want you guys to be bigger than what you are. You might, you might be little people. I mean, Ashlyn Weigel is like this tall. She's just this tiny little thing, but she can do great things for the Lord, and I know she loves the Lord. So we're going to talk about be bigger than what you are. When is the last time that someone told you to be an ant? Probably never. Well, I'm telling you that you should be like the ant. Sometimes God will give us things to illustrate the behavior that he wants us to have. And he will uh, even use animals and bugs and, and things that he created, okay? And there are things in this world that we consider little that God does not. And children might be little, but to me, they can do big things. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 30, verses 24 through 28, there be four things which are little upon the earth but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, and a coney is like a little mouse. And, and if I get to that today, I'll show, I have some pictures we're going to show you. And they're cute little guys, but they're very smart. 
But the Bible says the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks because they don't want to get eaten. Okay? The Bible says in verse 27, the locusts have no king, yet they go forth, all of them, by bands. And then verse 28 says the spider. You got to love those spiders. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. These are all what we would consider little creatures. Um, but they're, 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 we would consider them maybe non-significant creatures. But God holds them in high regard because of their actions. It's your actions that make you bigger than you are. And right now, we're going through some crazy times. I mean, we're, we're in uh, this, this, this COVID-19 thing, and maybe some of you don't even know what that is. Some of you are just like, hey, I'm out of school. Woo! But it's a pretty serious thing. And you know what? Maybe some of you guys need to step up a little bit, okay? So we're going to talk about some, some small things today. Um, and... I want you guys to learn from this, okay? Uh, the Lord starts out with little things on this earth. Well, guess what? Kids are little. And you know what? Kids are like bugs. You crawl, you're crawly, you're itchy, and you're always dirty, especially you boys. You boys are always itchy little guys. So we're going to talk about these things. The first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the ant. And now we have a picture of the ant for you. Okay, these are cute little guys, but they're also pretty fantastic if you think about it. The Bible, you know, more normally when we see ants, we just kind of want to step on them and squish them. Well, you know, you can do that. I, I don't do that anymore unless they're like all in my cookies or something like that. And then let me tell you, ain't nobody getting my cookie. If, if there's an ant on my cookie, I'm flicking that ant off my cookie. The Bible says, though, that ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the study. Now, the thing about the ant is ants live in communities, and they work together. They work as a unit. They survive through planning and labor, okay? They're the opposite of the sluggard, okay? They're very industrious, and children can take uh, a good lesson from the ant. Ants are not very big at all. We consider ants pests, but they're, they're, they're really not. And they are itchy, and they do get up in your food, and they seem to get into everything, and they're almost unstoppable. You know, you could spray all you want, and ants still kind of manage to survive. You know why? Because they want to survive. And, and they're interesting to watch. Stop sometime. Um, at where I work, there's, for some reason, there's a certain wall by my desk that the ants always love to seem to go up and down because they're on a mission they, can, they don't, it doesn't matter. They're going to get food from wherever they can find food. And they, even though they're little, they accomplish much, okay? Now, again, I sh uh, we'll put the picture of the ant back up there. And you see these guys, how they're kind of marching? And that's what they do. Um, do you know what? Ants can carry six times their body weight. Did you know that? That would be like, I don't know, who, would, who in my junior church would weigh 50 pounds? Um, hmm... Balaji? No, Balaji's probably 100 pounds or so. So somebody half a Balaji size, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Ashlyn. I think Ashlyn is like 50 pounds. Can you picture, picture Ashlyn trying to lift up Brother Rich? Brother Rich is like, well, 100 pounds, okay? So I'm about six times what Ashlyn weighs. Could you imagine her trying to pick up Brother Rich? It'd be tough. But ants don't care. They pick up six times their body weight because you know what? They, they're, they're driven, and, and they're bigger than what they are. And God wants us to be bigger than what we are. Listen, I know you're kids and you're limited in what you can do, but you still can do things, okay? Um, the ants show their wisdom by preparing their meat in the summer, seeking for it and storing it when it may be found, not, not sleeping all the time or being lazy. Now, the next picture I want to show you is what I call the sluggard. So right there, <laughs> look at those guys. The Bible says, Proverbs 6, 6, go to the ant, thou sluggard. See these guys up there? Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to kick back a little bit, but these guys are just sluggards, and they're lazy, and they probably don't accomplish very much. The Bible says, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise which have no guide or overseer or ruler, uh, uh, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. The thing about the ant is they're not lazy. They're not lazy. They're busy. And you know what's another thing that verse says? They don't need supervision. Here, here's a question. Why do we always need someone to tell us what we already know we need to do? Now, 
in, in this room where we're recording right now, there, there are some folks in here. Um, and I'm going to ask Miss Bonnie. Miss Bonnie, just yell it out. Miss Bonnie, do your kids know the things they have to do? Yes. They know their chores, right? Yes. Why do we have to keep telling our kids, make your bed, clean your room, do the dishes, when you already know you're supposed to do that? Your moms and dads have already re- laid down the, the law. Why do we need, well, uh, Mom, you didn't tell me to make my bed this morning. But for the last seven years of your life, I've been telling you to make your bed. See, the ant, you don't got to tell him. He knows what he has to do. Put your clothes in the hamper, okay? L- learn from the ant, you know? Labor for yourself. Uh, burden for yourself. Do what you need to do. Amen? A worker. Be a worker. The ants, they're little and they're very weak. Well, they're, they're small, but they're industrious. That means they take the opportunities they get. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Um, when the ravening, I wrote this, somebody wrote this, I don't know who it was, but they wrote, when the ravening lions, that means they're hungry, lack and suffer hunger, the laborious ants have plenty and they don't want. The ants are people not strong, yet in the summer, when everybody's playing and swimming and in the pool, they're out working because they know when the winter comes, food's going to be hard to find, and they prepare. And let me, say, tell, let me say this, little ant, don't sell yourself short, because God does not. And let me say this, children can be workers. Um, uh, sometimes after church, and this is amazing to me, sometimes after church, um, I see kids in the auditorium, little guys, I mean little guys, with like 16 hymnals in their hands, walking them up to put them away in the, in the hymnal rack. And I, and, and, and I look at these hymnals, and I know they weigh more than the kid does. And I'm like, good job. And you know why? Because they just want to be a worker. Because they're bigger than what they are. The Bible says the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Uh, You know what? You don't have to be big and strong to do big things for God. You know, you don't have to be big and strong to tell somebody about Jesus. I don't know how many times as the junior church pastor that I've heard stories about kids in my junior church that have won their neighbors to the Lord. I mean sincerely won them to Jesus. Seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds telling adults and teenagers how to get saved. And many times people get saved. That's incredible. Sometimes adults don't even go soul winning. Um, you know, you think of little things in the Bible. And um, I'm almost done with this lesson. I was going to uh, continue on to part two, but I'm not exactly sure how much time I have left. Again, the, the answer are people not strong. Listen, you don't have to be big and strong to, to, to accomplish a lot. Think about in the Bible, the little maid. The Bible tells us the story of a little maid, uh, a little girl who is taken as a slave in captivity, and her parents were probably killed uh, in that battle, but they, the, she, she worked for the people who took her to captivity. And you know what she did? She ended up saving the person who probably took her from her parents, ended up saving his life. You know why? Because she was bigger than what she was. You think of Samuel, little tiny Samuel in the Bible. As a little boy, his mom dedicated him to the temple. And man, he ended up doing great things for God. You know why? Because he was bigger than what he was. Um, the ants, they work, they just work, work crazy to make sure that when the winter came, they had plenty of food. Listen, and I will, I will finish this on the ants with this, this statement. Do you know you do not have to be big and strong to read your Bible? You do not have to be big and strong to pray to God. You do not have to be big and strong to witness to your best buddy who lives next door to you. You do not have to be big and strong to obey your parents. Hey, listen, guys, especially now, obey your mom and dad. Just obey them. You know why? Because they love you. Nobody's going to take care of you like your mom and dad will. Or maybe you live with your grandma or maybe you live with your aunt and uncle. You obey your authority because nobody's going to love you like they do. You, you don't have to be big and strong to dress right and to behave godly. You do not. You just have to, to know you're bigger than what you are and love the Lord. Now, I think I have a few more minutes. I'm going to talk about the next, the next little fella in here. I'm going to talk about the coney. If we can go ahead and put that first picture up, the coney. Um, the Bible says the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their, their houses in the rocks. I'm, I'm still looking at the picture of the coney. All right? The last time I... Um, um, my last thought was the ant, but today we're going to talk, or this, now we're going to talk about the coney a little bit. Again, little things, insignificant things in the spotlight. 
what is a coney? Um, I've never really heard of them before, but they're like little field mouses. Now, this next picture I'm showing you is, is a, a bunch of little conies all sitting in their little cave. All right? um, the Bible says that they hide themselves in the rocks. All right? Conies are small uh, in that they live among the rocks because they don't want to get eaten by everything that's out there. They're quick, they're tough, and they do what they need to do to survive. All right? they're, they're conscious of what's around them. You know, um, they don't want to get eaten. You know, when I think about that, I think about the world. You know, this world wants to eat our children. And by that, I mean they just want to swallow you up. They want you to be what the world is. I don't want you to be that. The conies protect themselves from what's around them. You know what, um, boys and girls, there's a lot of things in this world you need to protect yourselves from. Uh, and how they did it was they separated themselves. They, they took themselves out of a dangerous situation. And you know what? I don't know how they dug holes in the, in the rocks, but they found their way to get in there. They protected themselves. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 104, uh, 17, where the birds make their nests, as for the stork, uh, the fir trees are her, her house, the high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies. They hide themselves for trouble, uh, from trouble. Do you know how to stay out of trouble, boys and girls? Sometimes it's hard to do. For some of you guys, it's hard staying out of trouble. Do you look for the safe places in life? You know the, you know the safest place for, for kids is mom and dad. Love your mom and dad. Just, just trust your mom and dad. Your, your grandma, your grandpa, your church. You know, we love you. Your pastor, Pastor Connor, loves you guys. Um, we got we to gotta stay safe like the Coney. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, next week I'll talk about two more uh, creatures, two more little things from this. But let's think about that ant. Okay? Be bigger than you are. Be, be stronger than you are. Um, don't be a sluggard. Don't be lazy. Serve the Lord. And with the Coney, um, just separate yourself from things that can hurt you. Be smart about things. So I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and pray. I would like to say a couple things real quick before I pray. Um, make sure that you watch us every, uh, every Sunday at 1030. Um, I believe 1030 is the time slot for Junior Church. Um, if you have prayer requests, make sure that you get them to me or Alicia Campbell. Um, and you know what? Just pray for each other. And just pray that, that God will end this thing real quickly. All right? Well, bo boys and girls, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to sign off. And I love you guys. And hey, if you ever need anything from Brother Rich, have your mom and dad call me or you call me. And you guys just obey your parents, do right, and I love you. And you know what? Hopefully soon we'll be back in junior church again. And we are going to, oh, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to just show you. I'm going to practice. Because I haven't done this in a while. We're going to just have candy. Okay? We're just going to throw out the candy like that. We're just, can you see this? Can you see this? All right. Oh, yeah. It's happening. You know what? I'm probably going to have to pick all this up, too. So we'll do one more. No, we won't. Yes, we will. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Jesus, for how good you are to us. And we just love you, Lord, so much. Keep us safe. Amen.